The following is a plot from a sounding rocket trajectory that illustrates the relationships between atmospheric density, velocity, velocity squared, and dynamic pressure with respect to altitude along this trajectory. And maximum dynamic pressure is a critical point in all rocket flights since it is when the rocket faces its maximum aerodynamic forces and is used for structural design constraints. And for this reason, rockets will usually throttle down as they pass through this point to decrease this maximum dynamic pressure value. Here are all the same values again for a sounding rocket trajectory, but here is shown as a function of time instead of altitude. And here these relationships look a bit different because the rocket is starting from zero velocity and its acceleration is itself increasing over time, as we saw from the last video. This is the third video in the series, and this one will be taking a look at aerodynamic drag, atmospheric modeling, and dynamic pressure. And if you haven't seen it already, on this channel, I have over 50 videos on Orbital Mechanics with Python, the Space Engineering Podcast, which is also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast, and also videos in Spanish. So picking up from last video, here we are adding aerodynamic drag into the free body diagram, so the sum of the forces equation, and solving for the acceleration of the rocket gives us the updated differential equation that now includes drag in the numerator with thrust, since for both of them we need to divide by the mass at the current time step of the propagation. To model aerodynamic force, we must first model our atmosphere's density as a function of altitude. And our atmosphere is extremely complex and interesting, but we can get a good first order approximation of its density with a simple exponential function. And we can see that on the plot on the right where the x-axis is altitude from 0 to 400 kilometers, and on the y-axis we have atmospheric density. The blue scale on the left is a linear scale, which as we expect is exponentially decreasing as a function of altitude. And the purple is a log scale, where exponential functions look linear in log scales. Once we have atmospheric density, we also need the coefficient of drag. Where here are some examples of different coefficients of drag for different shapes. So for rockets, maybe you could use something around 0.2 to 0.7. And finally, for frontal area, you can plug in any value of a rocket that you see online. I'm sure you can look that up. So with all that, we can get to the force due to drag is equal to CD times A times rho V squared over 2, where this rho V squared value is the dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure is part of the total or stagnation pressure of a fluid and can be derived from the conservation of linear momentum for fluids under incompressible flow, which is the equation here on top where rho is the density of the fluid, v is the velocity of the fluid, x is direction of the flow, and p is pressure. And from that, after integrating, results in an equation for the total pressure of the fluid, again, assuming incompressible flow, which states that the total pressure of a fluid is constant and equal to its static pressure plus its dynamic pressure, where dynamic pressure equals rho v squared over 2. And this means that dynamic pressure is in units of kilograms over kilometers second squared, which is equivalent to kinetic energy per unit volume. And dynamic pressure can also be thought of as a decrease in static pressure due to the velocity of a fluid. And even though dynamic pressure was derived assuming incompressible flow, it's still useful in analyzing compressible flows, and as we saw in this equation is directly proportional to drag force. And if you want more details on the derivation of that equation, I'll have a link in the description to this page on the NASA website. Now going back to this plot, again we have the peak of the dynamic pressure, which also corresponds to the peak of drag force since they are directly proportional, assuming we hold coefficient of drag and frontal area constant. And one thing that rockets do in order to decrease this peak value is to throttle down or thrust at a value smaller than its maximum value in order to not reach such a high velocity while going through the thick parts of the atmosphere. Here's an example of what a throttle down profile dynamic pressure plot would look like where in this simulation the rocket throttles to 80% after some time after launch here which correspondingly changes the characteristics of this curve. And in this case this was an instantaneous decrease in thrust which is not what happens in real life but we'll get into more of those details later in the series.
So that's it for this video, and in the next one, we'll go over gravity turn trajectories, which is this simulation shown in these plots. And be sure to hit like and subscribe to keep up to date with all the new videos coming out, including the Space Engineering Podcast. And let me know if you have any questions or comments about this video, if anything was confusing, and what else you'd like to see in this series.